yeah, learning all of that stuff, building up the fundamentals, um, saying like, gosh, this is so hard. I don't know how any of this works. I'm so frustrated. But then what I found was at the very end of the project, when I wanted something to behave just so, I could make that happen. And it was not this hair raising um, experience of like, how does this object talk to that object and what order do things get called in? And like, I could very cleanly reason about my systems because everything that I do is just procedural. It's just, you know, like, like lines of logic and this thing happens and then that thing happens. I know like where the program starts. I know where it ends. I know how much memory it's using. I know how to debug it. Um, so there's nothing that's like happening that I can't very easily reason about. And so what I find is that towards the very end of projects, it makes it much easier to, to, um, to do. You've mentioned, so, you've mentioned that you didn't get a lot of issues regarding the logic in the game, like in the bugs, reports and things like that, like reviews. So, correct. And if you did, then you could have, uh, them fixed quite easily, right? Like, yeah. And actually, um, because I had total control over um, uh, the state of the game, you could say, um, my game explicitly uses a state machine kind of system that I set up. So every move in the game goes through this like separate kind of state machine system. You can't make a move in the game unless like my state machine um, like validates, like ensures that the move is valid and then like spits out the next like configuration on the board and like the next, like here's where everybody's going and like, here's all the animations that are going to happen. And so I was very able to, I was able to very cleanly lock all of that down. Uh, I think because I have precise control over, over all of it. Um, I know where all this stuff lives in memory. I know, um, I, I know all of it. And so uh, I, I think you're going to fight no matter what, basically. Like you're going to pay no matter what. The question is, how are, how are you going to pay, right? Um, and I, I guess this puts me, you know, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm much more fiscally conservative. So I just think that life just is kind of shitty when you don't have much money. So like the way to solve <laughs> that is to like get the money and like start saving it and like start putting yourself into a position of power. And like life sucks when like you don't have a game engine. Like you don't have a game engine. Like, what are you going to do? Like, you got to like, you know, you could make one and then eventually get to a point where you've got a, like a more robust tool set, right? Or you could like become a tenant in someone else's apartment building and have them dictate the terms to you. Like life just sucks when you don't have a game engine. <laughs> and so um, I've kind of always been about putting in the work up front and investing And then knowing that you will get a return at some point down the road for all that hard work. And that applies to so many other dimensions in life. It really does. It applies to your health. It applies to your relationships. Um, so I guess if there's any criticism of me that could be made that I think is the most valid is like, well, what if you have a heart problem at 40 and like you die in the operating room and like that almost happened. <laughs> You know, like, uh, like there, like there was a um, zero point. What was it? My nurse told me that there was like a zero point zero two percent chance. So it's basically like when I went in to get my valve repaired, there was like I was like rolling a five thousand sided dice, and like on one of those faces, like I die, right? And like um, now, you know, the the argument here is like. Um, is this kind of thing. Um, yeah, so like in a number of different Monte Carlo simulations of various lives, there's a life where you made your game engine and you like were just on the cusp of releasing your game and then you went in for a heart procedure and died. And like, I guess the question that you have to ask yourself is like, do you accept that reality? Do you accept that you could be living in that reality? Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that's a strong argument against learning things, how things work from scratch and pretty much investing in the future. Like, you know, you yeah. can, you can die tomorrow. <laughs> like it's, yeah. if, if that's, if that turns off like all the, all the learning part and all the things that you can do in, in 10 days, this reality that you can die tomorrow. I think that's well, a... I, 
it's it's for me i i thought a lot about this because i actually was faced you know uh and i thought i've really enjoyed this process like i yeah. enjoyed the whole thing actually like regardless of whether the game itself becomes a success or i ever end up making something that makes a lot of money i enjoy really learning things like this is this is me like this is what i want to do and i can't countenance working with a bunch of systems that i don't understand it's just not me and it's it's and i, I think like that's kind of the end of the discussion really it's like you like ultimately what you're saying is like this is what i value and i don't value the other stuff like i value understanding the tools that I'm working with. I value satisfaction in my work. I value um, control, you know, over my business and over the products that I make. This is what I value. And I don't have to be successful to um, have those values. Like that th doesn't have to lead to, to something successful. I can just enjoy what I'm doing knowing that I'm living my life according to my own values.